Good afternoon and welcome to Thoughts from the Word, our daily devotional. This is our last one for this week. Uh, As I mentioned the other day, uh, Kathy and I are going to uh, uh, be out of town for the next few days. We're going to go see my mother and then uh, go and see the kids. Uh, And so uh, probably will not be any devotions, any Thoughts from the Word next week, uh, though I'm taking all my equipment with me, so if I'm able to, I will certainly uh, post some, and and of course, you'll be notified when we have them. But today, we're going to look at Amos chapter 2, beginning in verse 4. Looking at verse 4 and 5, we'll be looking at the uh, judgment on Judah. So if you have your Bibles, turn there, Amos uh, chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Hear now the word of our Lord. Thus says the Lord, For three transgressions of Judah, and for four I will not revoke the punishment. Because they have rejected the law of the Lord, and have not kept his statutes, statutes, but their lies have led them astray, those after which their father walked. So I will send fire upon Judah, and it shall devour the strongholds of Jerusalem. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Amen. So, as we looked at the first six uh, of the judgments against the nations surrounding uh, Israel and Judah, we, you probably noticed that each of those judgments were people against people. Uh, the people, uh, it, it was crimes against humanity, as we talked about in our Bible study last night. They, were, they over, overdid things when they captured other people. The Lord now, through Amos, begins to speak to Judah. And, and Amos is from Judah, but most of his and most of his prophecy is to Israel. But he does have some words to Judah. First, that they they've rejected the law of the Lord, that they've not kept his statutes, they've they've their lies have led them astray, and they've followed the ways their fathers have followed. Now, those are the the four things that uh, the the Lord is going to punish. Basically, they did not continue in the faith they did not continue the religion and the faith and the teachings of their forefathers instead they walked in the lies they they followed them their own hearts they uh, lived the life of judges uh 21 21 they, when they had no king and they did everyone everyone did as they uh, they pleased uh, even though they had a king everybody did as they pleased they didn't live according to the law of the lord and didn't keep didn't keep the commandments. The, as we look at it, the takeaway that we can see from this and that we can apply to our own lives is that we need to make sure that unlike Judah in that day, that we are focused on walking with God, that our eyes are set upon him, that we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our strength, that we're seeking out his word, that we're studying his word, that we're in prayer, and that we're worshiping uh, and gathering to worship. Uh, I'm looking forward to our uh, gathering back together uh, corporately uh, because that is how we as the church are supposed to worship, uh, together as the body of Christ. Uh, Judah forgot the spiritual. And that will be significant later and, and is significant in our lives because what, I, what, what, what Amos is getting across and what I've found and you, you may have found too is that when our walk with God hurts, so does our walk with people around us. So does the way we treat people around us. If we are not treating God right, if we're not re- honoring Him, if we're not worshiping Him, if we're not lifting up our voices to Him in praise, it's hard for us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Uh, and so we need to understand that, that the Lord is still watching us and that He still expects a, a, a style of life from us. As there are basic uh, expectations for everybody, For those in Christ, for those who are his children, the the bar is raised even higher. And that we're not only supposed to have good relations with our neighbors horizontally, we're supposed to have uh, great relations with God vertically. So we need to be at work on those each day. Well, let's see what we have to, to hear and learn from the Valley of Vision. I hope you all are enjoying these readings uh, coming from this uh, book written a couple hundred years ago. This one is entitled, A Neophyte's Devotion. Glorious and holy God, 
Provocations against thy divine image have filled my whole life. My offenses have been countless and aggravated. Conscience has rebuked me. Friends have admonished me. The examples of others have reproached me. Thy rod chastised me. Thy kindness allured me. Thou hast seen and abhorred all my sins, and couldst easily and justly have punished me. Yet thou hast spared me, been gracious to me, given me thy help, invited me to thy table. Lord, I thankfully obey thy call, accept thy goodness, acquiesce in thy gospel appointments. I believe that Jesus, thy Son, has plenteous redemption. I apply to him for his benefits, give up my mind implicitly to his instructions, trust and glory in his sacrifice, revere and love his authority, pray that his grace may reign in my life. I will not love a world that crucified him, neither cherish nor endure the sin that put him to grief, nor suffer him to be wounded by others. At the cross that relieves my conscience, let me learn lessons of self-denial, forgiveness, and submission. Feel motives to obedience. Find resources for all needs of the divine life. Then let me be what I profess. Do as well as teach. Live as well as hear religion. Wow, this writer was addressing the very things that Judah was being punished, judged for. We too are to uh, keep those thoughts in mind and as that prayer prayed just that our focus would be on God, on Christ each and every day. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters and for their faith in you. Father, for those who are struggling, I pray that you'd fill them uh, with your spirit, that you'd grant them comfort and that peace which surpasses all understanding. Take away their anxieties and their struggles and give them your peace. I pray, Father, for those who are in need now of work, who've been, who are furloughed during this uh, shelter at home and are need finding of finding a job, I pray, Lord, that you'd provide jobs for them, that you'd provide the income they need, and that you'd protect them. I pray for each of our families and, and members and our friends that you'd protect us from uh, further sickness. And Lord, I pray most of all that you'd protect us from the sickness of sin, that you would just cleanse our hearts and make us right before you that we would walk with you and live for your glory all the days of our lives. Father, be glorified in us. We lift up your name and we exalt you. Thank you, O oh God, for being our God. And we just pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed weekend. Uh, we'll have our online worship on Sunday morning. We look forward to seeing you there. And we'll see you soon. God bless.